So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris O'Brien, Associate Director of Admissions at Boston College. And you are at the third installment, nine student admission program panels for admitted students in the month of April. The third installment is a very interesting one. And I know that's why uh, it piqued your interest of all of them, living at Boston College. Uh, we have very few commuters at BC, whether you're local, whether you're regional, whether you're national or international, just about everybody comes and resides at Boston College, which means you need to depend on us as a community uh, for food, for warmth, uh, for safety, for friendship and support. And we're gonna talk about all levels of living at Boston College, from the uh, roommate uh, registration, uh, from the freshman housing program at Boston College, how you interact with your hallmates, your roommate, upperclassmen, resident assistants, and other professionals. We're gonna talk about safety and security. We're gonna talk about how, how housing moves from first year to second year, third year to fourth year. And we'll answer some questions. Uh, we certainly wanna be here for a resource for you. Uh, we might not get to all of your questions, but we're gonna give it a try. Um, I have a panel of experts, uh, people who've lived at Boston College the right way. Even though I really didn't check that through your disciplinary records, but it seemed like a really catchy way to say, students that have lived in many different elements at Boston College in terms of housing situations and students that can speak to all the things that you should consider about you know, moving away to college, uh, living with a roommate um, and making the most of your residence experience. If, if any of your parents are watching, back in the day, we used to call these dormitories, dorms. They're not dorms. Dormitory is like where you sleep uh, and so much goes on uh, more than sleeping. Um, these buildings aren't kennels. These buildings aren't dormitories. They're living communities, in some cases living and learning communities where students are going to learn a lot about themselves and each other and I, I think meet friends for life. Uh, so the dorm thing, we don't say dorm. That's so 1984 we talk about residence halls and that's where we'll start. So I'm gonna have you guys introduce yourself and let's go um, alphabetically by first name. So Charlie, you'll go first. And Charlie, if you can say who you are and, and where you're from and what year you are. And then I think just in terms of give, giving people some names and some buildings, tell us where you lived, where you lived your first year, your second year, and for some of you, your third and fourth year, just so people can recognize buildings and the style of those buildings. Uh, once we've gone around the horn and got introductions from all of you, I'll ask you a few basic questions that will kind of lead us to, to a path to cover a lot of ground when it comes to residence life. So, uh, so Charlie, why don't you get us started? All right, thank you, Chris. So, hi everyone, my name is Charlie Fackler. I'm a sophomore at BC. I'm in the Carroll School of Management studying accounting and business analytics. And so my freshman year, I lived on upper campus in Gonzaga Hall, uh, which is connected with Fitzpatrick. So we affectionately called it Fitzaga. And then this year, I actually, again, live in freshman housing because I am a resident assistant. So I live on the Newton campus uh, in Hardy Cushing Hall, specifically in Hardy. So I like to consider myself something of a freshman housing pro since I've lived on both campuses uh, in both of the environments you could be living next year as a student at Boston College. And I'll kick it down to Colleen. Fantastic. Thanks, Charlie. Colleen, you're next. Hi, everybody. My name is Colleen Wagner. I am from just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am a senior at Boston College studying economics with minors in biology and management and leadership. Um, and I have lived all over the place. My freshman year, I lived on the Newton campus in Duchesne West. My sophomore year, I lived on the lower campus in Walsh Hall. Um, my junior year, I did one semester abroad, but the semester that I was on campus, I lived in 2000 Commonwealth Avenue, which is kind of a unique situation. It's considered on-campus housing, but it's an apartment building that um, the university owns. And now I currently live back on campus in Rubenstein Hall. That's great. Jen. Hi everyone, my name is Jen. I am also currently a sophomore. Um, I'm studying Applied Psychology and Human Development in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, the double major in Political Science in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And I'm originally from Orlando, Florida. 
Um, last year, I lived in Keys Hall on Newton campus as well. And then this year, I live on College Road, which is right in front of Upper Campus for freshmen uh, in Roncalli Hall. Perfect. Perfect. Kate. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate Johnson. I'm a senior this year in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm from Portland, Maine. I'm studying biology with a minor in history. Um, I've also lived all over the place and was also a Newton kid freshman year. I lived in Hardy my freshman year, and then I lived in 90 St. Thomas More Road uh, sophomore year in an eight-man. And then junior year, I was abroad the first semester in Australia and then came back and lived in Gabelli, uh, which is a four-man apartment, uh, also technically on lower campus. And then this year I'm living in the St. Thomas More apartments on lower campus. Yeah, you've been all over. And uh, Talin. <clears throat> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Talin Ertanji. I'm a senior in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. I'm double majoring in Applied Psychology and Human Development Economics with a minor in Marketing and the Carroll School of Management. Um, I'm originally from Newport Beach, California and um, similar to everyone else. Um, I kind of lived all over the place, but not really. Um, my freshman year, I lived in Costco, the um, all women's dorm, and I lived in the women's experience hall. And then I went year and lived there. And then my junior year, I had the opportunity to travel abroad to Madrid, Spain, and lived off campus um, for the remainder of my junior year. And then um, as a senior, I'm currently living off campus as well. All right, so we're gonna fill in a lot of the details of all these things that we've mentioned today because we talked, you've already talked a lot about some of the different living experience, whether they're in, in Boston or abroad uh, or, or on Newton campus or upper campus and different styles of living. But we're, we're gonna break it down to the basics, okay? Um, how nervous were you to move to college and live with a roommate? Jen, you, you, here you are, you're, you're in Orlando, Florida, you're a thousand miles away from Boston. You knew that Boston College was full of relatively nice people. Yeah, Boston, Bostonians are a little bit intense, but it's only because we're right all the time. <laughs> but, but we're a little bit intense. Um, so, you know, were you really nervous about, you know, living with someone for the first time and what that sort of, you know, sharing a space with someone, how that experience was going to be? Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, when I toured BC, I wasn't really thinking about housing. I was thinking about everything else, which I know is kind of not something a lot of people do. Like and what? then all of a like sudden, what well, Jen, like what? What we, what was more concerned you more concerned with? I mean, in general, making friends because that, like you said, I'm from Florida. I was like, oh, no one's gonna be from Florida. No one's gonna be able to relate to me. Everyone's gonna be from Massachusetts or like New England area. I don't know any of the sports teams. I can't like fit in or anything. Um, so I think that was like a really big concern for me over than like just the housing situation. But then we get like that housing agreement thing, and I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with rooming. And then I started thinking about it. And like looking at pictures I'm like it's gonna be like a super small space or that's the image I had in my head and I didn't know who it was gonna be um so I was definitely kind of freaking out and then just joining the like class of 2023 Facebook page just like everyone posting about themselves was definitely a little bit overwhelming um so that's definitely got like a little bit stressful prior to figuring out the roommate process and everything now if if you were nervous imagine if you were from the nicest state in the union if you're from Minnesota, uh, you know, a good distance away and coming halfway across the country. I mean, would, Colleen, was this something that you were nervous about, you know, living with someone for the first time? And if you were, uh, what kind of steps did you go through in order to make that transition to college, especially living with someone, a little bit easier for you? Yeah, I was also definitely very nervous about that. Um, so for that very reason, I strategically picked another roommate from Minnesota. Um, so I kind of did an interesting, there's a couple different ways you can go about selecting a roommate. Um, Jen just mentioned, so once you're admitted to BC, you can be added to a class Facebook page. So a ton of people will post a little bit about them, where they're from, their interests, that kind of thing. And so some people, um, if you're really brave, you can go entirely random and you fill out a survey about your different living, living habits. And then um, the residential life staff will just randomly pair you with someone they think you would get along well with. Um, other people will message via Facebook and um, meet that way, then request to live with each other. 
I had a friend who I went to elementary school with who went to a different high school and one of her friends at that um, neighboring high school to mine was also going to BC. So I knew in that scenario, it'd be kind of like a comfortable random. We could both talk about Minnesota, which I'd love to do as Chris knows. Um, so that was definitely a comfortable way because we were able to meet up before, get to know each other a little bit before moving in, coordinate who was going to bring what for the room, that kind of thing. Now, Charlie, <clears throat> was it, you know, was there any different expectations that you had um, coming in and moving into onto campus, meeting a roommate? You know, you know, was it something that you were particularly nervous about? Were you particularly excited about it? Did you do the th same things that Colleen did? Yeah, so I personally, my big uh, decision that came over housing was whether or not to live in a living learning community or to go for the uh, traditional uh, living scenario. And so ultimately I did decide to go with a traditional living. And so, but I think the big thing for me was really trying to figure out, do I wanna live in a living learning community where uh, we all kind of have, everyone who's living together really has that, uh, that common ground of, so for me, I was accepted into the Shaw leadership uh, living learning community. So then I would have been living with 19 other people in the Shaw house, which actually is a legitimate house on upper campus. Um, and, you know, we would have had that component of all wanting to be there because of the desire to just learn more about leadership, how to be a leader, et cetera, or going in uh, to traditional housing. And so that was the big, big decision for me. I ended up uh, choosing to go traditional housing where I picked my roommate. And I think for me, my expectation was just that I would go in and we would kind of live well together. We cohabitated well. And ultimately that was what I got. Um, and, you know, I think to each and every person's own experience, some people become best friends with their freshman roommate and they uh, are still roommates together as seniors. Uh, whereas other people, it's just that you cohabitated well together. You lived well together. And uh, that's really all that I, that's was my expectation. And that was what I got. Uh, Talene, can you can you take us back to move-in day when you came all the way out and started moving your stuff in and meeting all the people? I mean, was okay. it, is it just a, a crazy, overwhelming experience? Yeah, definitely. So um, I came with my parents um, and we shipped some of my things to BC um, and went to the mailroom and was kind of carrying everything. And um, as I was like walking up the stairs, um, my parents were like, you should go say hi to that person or go talk to that person. And all I was thinking about was getting to my room and um, laying down because I was so tired from my flight and everything, but also just all the like nerves and everything and the angst was also making me want to talk to more people and get to know um, my fellow classmates. So I remember walking in, um, I lived on the second floor of Costco. So I walked in and um, I see this um, other Boston College student and she's like, hi, welcome to Costco. Um, I'm your RA, Amelia. And she really was um, like the best start to my BC experience. She was the one that really introduced me to Boston College and its community. Um, we had like several, um, similar interests. So for example, her best friend was president of, our, of the Armenian club at the time and I'm Armenian. So she connected me with her, but she also made me feel at home. Um, coming all the way from California, I was very nervous because I never one had shared a room with anyone. Um, I didn't know what cold weather was like. I saw snow when I was like five years old, but that was it. So all I knew was I was ready, was getting ready for a big storm. Um, and I didn't know my roommate that well. So it was just a bunch of different things adding up, but I was so excited and my parents were there to support me, which was really helpful. But I remember moving in and, you know, putting my bed sheets on and making our room look pretty and kind of like Colleen said, we talked about what we were going to bring. So I decided to bring a microwave and my roommate decided to bring a fridge and we, um, we kind of decided what theme we wanted. Um, so that was really fun. But once we all got settled in, we ended up going to an event on campus where I met a lot of other classmates and I ended up meeting one of my best friends there. But I would definitely say that residential life and also BC in general, like the first year experience does a wonderful job. Um, I went, so I moved in early because I was coming from the West Coast. So I moved in early and also attended orientation at the same time. So it was nice because I kind of got 
acclimated to the college dorm environment before there were a bunch of people um, in my dorm and I got to know other people that were from faraway places, um, I would say. So um, I felt at home within the first week which was something that I could have never imagined um, during my college experience. Now, now, Kate, I know everyone is worried about the fact that you, you have a roommate and you live on a, a, a hall of either all women or all young men, depending upon your gender, uh, and you have to share the space. You have to get a shower caddy and you have to walk down the hall to the bathroom or you see all these people that are your age and your class all around you in the hall. I would think that that's conducive to making all kinds of friendships and all kinds of connections, even if it's just brushing your teeth next to people. So you, can you talk about some of the benefits that you picked up living in a community like that, where, yeah, you didn't have your own bathroom or you didn't have your own kitchen, but you had all these other people that you were sharing the space with? Yeah, sure. Um, so I would say adjusting to using the communal bathroom like the first week of freshman year was it was a lot because, I mean, I don't think anyone really has much experience with that unless you've, you know, been to like summer camp or things like that, which I had really never done, never done like a sleepaway camp. So it was a whole new concept for me. Um, and it was a little bit terrifying. It took a long time to kind of get comfortable even just being in the space and like sharing space with others. Um, and it can be a little bit awkward, you know, like the first time you like see someone like walking down the hall in a towel and you're like, oh, that's so weird. Like, to see someone doing that but it's just it's a normal thing that happens and you kind of just have to get used to um but there are a lot of common spaces especially in freshman dorms to kind of get to know people whether you don't if you don't feel comfortable you know necessarily making a friend in the bathroom you can easily make a friend in the study lounge you know on newton campus we have our own dining hall uh, i met a lot of friends just on in the dining hall getting a meal for the first week in addition on the newton bus that's a big a big one for sure is meeting people on the bus to and from main campus um, but I think everyone is one, one important thing to remember is that everyone is in the same boat as you the first week that you move in. So even if you are kind of adjusting to whether it be sharing a room, sharing other common spaces, you know, getting to know your roommate, you know, just adjusting to college life in general, everyone else is trying to do the exact same thing. So even if you think it's, it's an awkward thing to reach out and just be like, Hey, like I'm Kate, I live on your hall. Um, like it's not like, <laughs> don't feel uncomfortable doing that. Like that's a really valid and easy way to make a friend. So I would say that's a big one. And that's how everyone from Maine gets to know people, right? Hi, I'm from Maine. Like, is I'm, that's how friendly you guys are. It doesn't come up as often as you'd think. <laughs> All right. So everyone's interested in the Newton campus, upper campus uh, situation. Now, this is a good sign that so many questions are coming in about it because that means that you guys have done the research and you know that there are two freshman campuses that we've already sort of alluded to them and some of the pluses and minuses that come with them. Uh, we don't call them minuses, we call them smaller pluses. Uh, but let's talk about, um, let's have someone, one of our Newton uh, residents talk a little bit about some of the perks and some of the um, hidden benefits, like Kate said, like the Newton bus. So talk a little bit, can, can one of you volunteer and talk a little bit about the Newton experience? I would love to, Chris. I am a big fan of Newton and I actually just took a trip back there on my own free time this past Saturday night because I miss Stewart Dining Hall so much, which happens to be my favorite dining hall on campus. And I'm sure we'll get to a little bit about food, but um, just a little bit about Newton campus. It's a mile and a half away from main campus. There are shuttles that run back and forth every five to 10 minutes that you can track on an app. Um, and it's really easy to catch these buses. And you can also on, honestly also walk or run. You see a lot of people like just take that route. Um, I've done it on really nice days and it's really pretty because you see like the community around Chestnut Hill. Um, but on Newton campus, it's only freshmen, but then there's also Stewart Dining Hall, which is very nice. The people there are very friendly and you get to see just other freshmen walking around. So you get to kind of see similar faces. Um, we also have our own little gym called the hut um, and then we have the soccer and lacrosse fields um, so sometimes intramural sports will go on there or you'll have like lacrosse games which are lacrosse teams are really good here on campus um, so really cool to be able to like hear that outside of my window and keys um, and we also have the law school house there so you don't really see the law students because they're there during the day when you're on campus during classes that means our lunches at Stewart are really really good 
Um, so again, I keep on going back to the food because stew is so good. Um, but it's definitely just a big community because it's mostly just all freshmen throughout the day. Um, and then you end up taking the bus with similar people once you get on like your routine for classes and everything. And it's also just nice being able to separate um, school and then going home. So you have that kind of distance. Um, those are just a couple of my favorite things. Perfect, Jen. <clears throat> now, can we have a counterpoint? Can someone from the upper campus refute any of that? by talking about how valuable their experience on new upper campus was? Yeah, I can tackle some of that. So I lived on upper campus in Gonzaga Hall. And so the thing I really appreciated about living on upper was that I could wake up kind of last minute for my classes and quickly run down to there. Um, I think that is definitely something that I have had to adjust to a little bit, making that move from living on Upper to living on Newton is just uh, planning a little more time on my schedule. But I think the big thing that I really enjoyed about living on Upper was just how close you were to everything. Uh, you just walked down the stairs and you were in Mac, which is one of the main dining halls on um, a middle campus. Uh, so that's a very popular one, which gets hit up a lot during lunch for Eagle's Nest, which has some amazing bowls, uh, pressers, and salads. Uh, and then Mac, which is the large dining hall uh, on the top floor of McElroy Commons. And yeah, so that I think that was the big thing for me. Just I really enjoyed the walkability of being able to uh, just walk to campus very easily, uh, walk up. Uh, down to lower campus to Duncan because uh, like many other people on this call, I sure uh, am a coffeeholic. So love that opportunity to cabinet <laughs> somewhere. Charlie, you're you're the only one in a freshman room. Uh, other people are in residences, except for Colleen, who's in the most like nondescript space I've ever seen. But but Charlie, you're you're clearly in a dorm room, a residence hall room, clearly. Um, give us a 360. All right, I will say ignore the pile of clothes on my couch. Um, you know, did some laundry, just haven't gotten around to folding it yet. I'm but so you. did some laundry. I'll I'll report home. That's awesome. Oh boy. Thank you, Chris. I'm sure my mom <laughs> will love to know that I can do laundry on my own. Um, but so to preface, I because of being an RA, I do live in a single. So it's a little bit of a smaller room than a double, but very similar. Uh, behind me to my left, you have the traditional closet. So the only difference here is that in a double, there would be one on the opposing wall. There are hooks over here for towels, et cetera. And then you got your bed. For me, I have the couch because of being an RA. And then, yeah, here we go. And then the desk and my fish. This is Kit. Uh, she says hi. Uh, and pets are allowed. Is that what you're saying? Um, in, um, in, in so room? you are allowed to have a fish and I know that is one type of allowable pet, I think. So you can either have like a small aquarium, no more than, I believe it's like 10 gallons, might be five gallons, uh, or like a small terrarium. But other than that, the only way that someone can have a pet is if they had an emotional support animal, uh, which can be registered through residence life. Thank you. Uh, all right. So Questions are coming in about to go back to the roommate situation. Now there's five of you and, you and many of you told your story, but maybe just by a quick show of hands, how many of you uh, went random, randomly had a roommate selected for you? Okay, 40% of you. Uh, Colleen, you, you knew somebody and, and chose somebody prior to coming. And then Charlie and Talleen, you met people through other means like Facebook and that's how you matched. <clears throat> would you say that's pretty typical? About 40% would go random. Uh, that's kind of what I, when I talk to students, it's, it's kind of half and half. And then there's always this percentage of people like Colleen that said, you know, it was a friend of a friend who I knew through and we rec we re request each other. There is also the opportunity that through orientation, people can request each other because orient, many orientation sessions happen before the July, late July notification about housing. So people are asking about how often people do one or the other. 
but I've heard half and half. I mean, unless any of you guys think that I have that wrong and you hear a lot more of one or a lot more of the other, I kind of think it's 50, 50. Would you, would you guys agree? Okay, good stuff. The next question I want to talk about is how you use your space. Um, when it comes to your room back in freshman year, or when it comes to your room now, do you use your room more for study space or for social space or for quiet space? Um, and, and did you have a conversation with your roommate about how you're going to use the space? Uh, Kate, why don't you start that question? Like, again, maybe from where to start a freshman year and, and now that you're older and you've had a lot of different people you've lived with, like, how do you have that conversation? How do you prefer to use your space? Sure. So actually, I've actually lived with the same roommate since freshman year. So Fantastic. we've had, yeah, so we've had, uh, we, I went random, met her through the housing survey freshman year, and we've lived together every year since. She's my best friend. Um, but yeah, I think it definitely just a conversation you, you need to have, especially um, if you do have vastly different ideas of how you want to use the space. Luckily for the two of us, since we were matched through the housing survey, we had pretty similar um, ideas about how we wanted to use the space. Uh, we're both big nappers, so we like a little a little quiet time in the in the room. And uh, I'm definitely more of a, of a study at my desk in the room kind of girl rather than going to the library. And I think that honestly stems from uh, being a Newton kid freshman year and not wanting to have to go back and forth on the bus. So once I was home uh, in my dorm room on Newton, um, I was kind of in for the day and I would just stay there and do work. Um, and then in terms of social space, uh, it's definitely changed since freshman year. Now that we have a, a common room, I've had a common room since sophomore year. Um, so we kind of, we use that space a lot more than we would use our personal bedroom for, for space uh, in terms of social activity. Um, but yeah, I think having that conversation is huge. And if you do go random in terms of roommates, uh, you're usually going to be matched with someone who has a very similar idea of how they want to use their space. Uh, how about someone else? How about Jen? How, you know, did you have that conversation and how do you use the space in your room? Yeah, freshman year was a little bit different. Um, I went random, like compared to now, but so I went completely random as well. And the good thing is that we both didn't really use our room as study space. We kind of used it to nap, which was nice. Um, and we had similar sleeping schedules. I wasn't in my room all too much freshman year. I really was a big fan of lounges. Um, so most of the freshman dorms, honestly, all of the dorms too, have some sort of communal lounge um, or like designated study lounge. So uh, on Newton campus, I also wouldn't want to go all the way to the library. I'm also just not a fan of libraries. So I'd spend a lot of my like downtime or like homework time in the lounge. Um, so that's where I saw a lot of my friends and things like that. Um, and then this year, obviously, it's a little bit different just because we have some classes online. Um, but I don't have a lounge like a like my own lounge because I'm living on College Road, which is still traditional housing, even as a sophomore. So I also use the lounge that we have here. It's in the basement. Um, and if not, then I'll go to one of our like small cafes or like study spaces on campus. Uh, Colleen, did you bring too much? Did you not bring enough? Like, did you, did you, when you moved in your first time, did you bring the right amount of stuff or did you have to send stuff, stuff home? Uh, how did it, how did it work out? Chris, it's like you talked to my mom. Um, yeah, I learned pretty quickly freshman year that um, you definitely don't need as much as you think you do. Um, I feel like my styles and things preferences have also changed throughout. And um, I mean, as you move into more of the apartment style on campus housing situations, you'll eventually need other things. But um, for the first year living situation, um, I definitely brought more clothes than I needed to. I just think I was overprepared in that sense. So I kind of brought a lot home with me over the winter break and then just left it there. Um, so honestly, it worked out, but there was plenty of space to store everything. Um, I also opted to um, put my bed on the highest setting. So I had some extra storage underneath my bed. Um, but as Charlie showed you, there's definitely like, I mean, you can see his closet behind. There's definitely a lot of space. There's um, an abundance of hooks and there's um, other little shelves and stuff where there's plenty of room. Um, and then, I mean, you find space for the bigger things. Like my, um, my roommate and I coordinated who was gonna bring the refrigerator and the microwave, um, that kind of thing. So um, I definitely think every year you kind of adjust a little bit and learn like, oh, maybe I didn't really use this as much as I thought I was going to, or, oh, so-and-so across the hall from me had this. I think that'd be really useful that kind of thing. One of the resources that definitely helped me the most moving in as a first year student was the container store. 
um, they have compiled this like master list from every university across the country. Um, and they have a very detailed list of what the university provides and what the university does not provide for you. Um, for example, BC would give you a recycling bin, but not a garbage can. And I didn't know that before. But even though I'm from Minnesota, I could order it to the container store in Chestnut Hill and pick everything up and it was already in package. And then I just moved it into my room. So that was super helpful. Um, in terms of figuring out what to bring, what to leave at home. Uh, Talene, how about, and Colleen kind of mentioned it, but what's a, what's a good piece of advice for people? What should they bring with them that maybe you forgot to bring or you got later in your time? You know, What didn't you think of? What was a good idea? Maybe you didn't bring it yourself, but you figured it out when you got here. Yeah, I think kind of going off of what Colleen said, so I did like the Bed Bath & Beyond alternative or like compliment to the container store and bought a lot of stuff from the container store too. But um, I would definitely say if you're coming from like a faraway place, um, like learn how to like use storage. So I also um, put my bed to the highest level and I kind of fit all my winter clothes on the bottom of my bed um, in like bins or whatever it was. Um, and then I like in the middle of, I think it was like November when it started the first snowfall and everything, I was like, okay, I need to switch my wardrobe over. Um, but one thing that definitely helped that I um, that I think my parents told me to bring was a fan. Um, I didn't expect it to be so hot when I moved to BC in, in the fall. And it was, I think it was like the hottest year um, that I've experienced when I moved back to BC. So definitely bring a fan if that's like a window fan or a standing fan. Um, you can also um, collaborate with your roommate on what you guys want to do, but that was super helpful. And I also had one like facing me when I was asleep because I like to sleep in the cold. Um, so something of that like idea, I would say, but um, I also didn't buy, or I didn't bring all my winter clothes. Um, I thought that it would be a better idea for me to buy them in Boston, since obviously Boston is a colder, a lot colder place in um, the West Coast. So I, instead of buying all my winter clothes, um, my one of my best friends and I went to um, the mall and she just kind of gave me recommendations of what to buy and what not to buy. Um, and we went when they had a lot of deals going on. So that was really helpful because um, she was from Massachusetts and she had a lot of, um, you know, good opinions and stuff like that, which was, which is something that I sadly don't have, but I do have now um, after living on the East Coast for four years. So um, I think that would be really helpful. We all have to transition to the new community we live in, uh, the roommate that you have, we all have to get used to the food. So people sometimes have it built in their head that, that college dining is going to be dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets and tater tots. And I think we should ask students, maybe what, have you found dining? Have you been surprised by it? Has it been uh, diverse in terms of the offerings? Has it been, has it evolved? Is it good? Kate, talk about the food at BC. Uh, did it meet, exceed or not quite get to your standards? I would say it exceeded my expectations because the only college food experience that I had had prior to coming to BC was visiting my sister at her school and she went to a big state school. So it was kind of just like they had like a, a big vendor that supplied all their food. And then coming to BC, we have our own, uh, our own dining service. So everything's made fresh every day. It's nothing that's like sent frozen and then like just heated up in bulk. Um, so I was very pleasantly surprised with the food. Um, there's a lot of good options that kind of rotate through. So you can, you can acquire some favorites that you know will be back, but then there's always something kind of new and fresh, which is nice. Um, yeah, and then uh, um, definitely I think worth mentioning, my, my roommate is a vegetarian um, and they do have a lot of good options for, for different dining restrictions. Uh, so they're very, very inclusive in what they serve. Uh, they've got options for everyone pretty much every day. It's a very good food. Uh, Charlie, number one, do you agree? And can you just go, you know, a little quickly into how dining works at, at BC? Yeah, absolutely. I full heartedly agree. I think one of my favorite things uh, with living on the Newton campus is Stuart or Stu as everyone first to call it kind of serves as like sort of BC's test kitchen for when they're trying to like see if something new could like roll out to um, 
the rest of BC Dining. So that's always been a fun experience when uh, I come in and there's something new that they're trying out. Uh, BC also BC Dining also does a lot with different themed uh, cultural nights around the dining options, which is always fun because you get to try something new that you otherwise wouldn't try. Um, and then so the way the dining plan works is it is a debit based um, meal system. So um, at the start of the semester, you get like, I think it's, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, is it 2200 more or less? Um, roughly that amount. That's the mandatory meal plan. Um, and so as a freshman living uh, in the traditional housing style, it is required uh, that you enroll in it. There are options to uh, kind of upgrade your meal plan if you need to. Say, for example, you're a division one athlete who eats more like four to five meals a day. Uh, there are upgrade options available to add more money to that plan. But so what I really enjoy about the meal plan is that everything has a value. So rather than a swipe system, say, um, you know, it's 10 o'clock and I'm kind of feeling a little snacky, starting to get at that point of getting a little bit hangry because I do get that way. Um, I can walk into Lions, which is one of our dining halls on campus and just kind of grab say a muffin or an apple or a croissant. And so that'll be like two or three bucks that's, deb that's uh, taken out of my meal plan. But that's a really nice thing because I feel like it gives a lot of flexibility uh, and you don't feel like you have to use a swipe a day uh, or a certain amount of swipes each day, you can kind of use money uh, as you feel you need to, to fit your dietary needs. Okay, you covered that, that's the good stuff. Uh, food is good, there's enough options, and the system is one that <clears throat> you can get something quick or you could sit down and have a real social meal and, and eat at any of the facilities around campus of which there are over a dozen, perfect. Um, how about safety? When you're living in a residence hall, do you feel secure? Do you feel safe? Uh, whether that's what BC does or whether that's the trust you have in the people that are in the building. Uh, Jen, uh, do you feel particularly safe when it comes to living on campus? Yes, absolutely. That was definitely something my parents were obviously concerned about sending me off miles and miles away. Um, but there's a couple of things and Chris was kind of alluding to them. So Boston College has its own police department uh, Boston College Police Department or BCPD uh, and we have their phone numbers both emergency and non-emergency at the back of our Eagle ID cards which is an ID card that every student has. You see them walking around campus sometimes or just patrolling in general so you see their presence there. Um, we also have a blue light system essentially if there's an emergency um, there's over a hundred blue lights on campus where you can press this emergency button and uh, BCPD will respond uh, in about 90 seconds. Um, but in general, the atmosphere on campus, um, you feel like you're in a community space and there's lighting everywhere. Um, there's also just people usually walking around. And I think again, like Chris was saying, that does have to do with the people here. Um, I've never been felt unsafe. Um, I work at the recreation, recreation center, which is all the way on lower campus. And I work the closing shift and I have to walk up to upper campus basically at night. Um, and yes, I take the bus halfway, but I've never felt unsafe walking the rest of it. Um, and that's just a good feeling to not have that in the back of my head. Thank you, Jen. <clears throat> Questions about RAs. Now, a lot of people that know the vernacular of living on campus, living in a residence hall, know what a resident assistant is. Uh, I have, there are resident assistants on this call right now. Um, can you guys as resident assistants talk a little bit about what your function is and you know, what you feel is uh, the important role that you play in the, students' lives, the hall's lives, the building's lives in terms of making community? Yeah, I can talk a bit about that, especially since I actively work in the role of being an RA in the first year area. So um, to me and everyone on our staff, our big role in the community is uh, just to build community. Um, from the get-go, we really try to build an environment that is inclusive and makes everyone feel very welcome. And so I think one of the ways that I did that was uh, early on in the start of the semester, I would keep my door open for a while when I was in my room. And I would encourage my residents to keep their doors open because, um, you know, 
if you're in your room and someone walks by, then, uh, you know, you can kind of just say hello, have a brief conversation. Uh, in non-COVID times, you could very easily just kind of pop in. But uh, right now with uh, the guest limits, you can only have one other person who's not a resident, who's not like your roommate in your room. Uh, so that does kind of limit things there. But keeping your door open is a big one. RAs also do put on programs. So um, it will be various things. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I put on was just like an outdoor uh, activities one. So it was spike ball uh, tournament, a uh, little bit of a, one of those floor bowling. And then also I partner with our resident minister to provide opportunities for reflection. So RAs really do a lot to build community. Um, and that's a little more of the it's a visible part of our role, but the most visible part is definitely um, just kind of building safety. So RAs are on duty every night from 8 p.m. until 7 a.m. Uh, on weekdays, we do three rounds. On weekends, we do four rounds of the building uh, just to really ensure that everything is safe. Okay, residents are uh, doing well um, and just kind of making sure that uh, student uh, uh, code of conduct policies are being followed. Uh, but that is definitely the most visible part of our role. And I think that's what a lot of people associate uh, RAs as. They're like, ah, those are the guys who enforce the rules. Uh, whereas we kind of more so prefer to be like, no, that's not, that's the least favorite part of our job. We're, we're really here to build a community. But um, yeah, and then a big thing I would say is when you get to BC, it'll be posted on a bulletin board, RA duty phone numbers. Add those numbers into your contacts. Save one as, uh, you know, if you have an Apple phone, save it as one of your favorites because it, it inevitably, I guarantee a lot of people on this call will get locked out. I myself have gotten locked out a handful of times, as I'm sure everyone else can say. And uh, if you're locked out between 8 and 7, 8 p.m. and 7 a.m., you can call RAs to get back into your dorm. Colleen, do you want to add anything to that? That was pretty, that was pretty good. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would add, so um, I was also a living learning community resident assistant, um, like I said, for the women's um, experience. So um, I, in like regards to creating community and um, presenting like different activities for my floor, we also did different events. So for example, we would have a monthly dinner um, where we talk about different topics. So um, one was being a woman at Boston College um, and one was talking about um, the identity that we form and who we wanna be um, and other different activities. Like we did yoga on the quad one day. Um, we brought in a, um, meditational speaker and we did meditation. So we all try, like we try to do fun things and um, we also did cupcake decorating. So doing different activities to promote those types of conversations um, and also engage in that community that Charlie talked about. Um, and I know that there are other, or there's other living learning communities like the Perspectives community, the Healthy li um, Living Learning community, the Multicultural for Living community. So if you are an RA, then um, you would also be working on different topics Topics that are related to your living learning community. But I would say that um, being the women's floor one, I had a great experience because we were in the women's dorm. So we talked about um, what it was like to be homesick, but also what it was like to be a woman on campus. So a good range of um, different topics. Uh, now we talked a lot about freshman living. Um, many, none of you are first year students anymore. Charlie, you're with first year students, but can you talk about how housing changes? At Colleen, can you talk about the evolution of housing as you get older in the Boston College system and what are the benefits of it? Yeah, of course. So um, I think this process actually just happened. So around middle of March, um, you have the opportunity to apply for your housing for the next year. So as first year students, um, it's pretty typical. Um, the kind of traditional thing is to go for what is called an eight man. Um, so that means on lower campus, there are dorm buildings, but um, instead of like a traditional double, triple, quad, that kind of thing, um, they're more of a suite style room. So in a traditional eight man, there will be four double rooms. So four rooms of two people each um, with two bathrooms and then kind of a smaller common area, that kind of thing. So um, once you gather all your friends um, together and you submit the application, say this is the 
the kind of housing we would live in, the Office of Residential Life will say, great, we can offer you a pick time at this time. And then at whatever time um, they assign you, that's when you're allowed to pick your specific um, room and building that you would like to live in. So after your first year, um, the majority of sophomore students live on the lower campus. Some do live up in a few dorms on the um, on the upper campus as well. And then as you move into your junior year, so um, I've seen a couple questions come in about the three versus four years of housing. BC will guarantee everybody three years of on-campus housing. So if that is the case for you, your junior year is typically the year that you would live off campus. Um, there is a neighborhood very close by with um, an abundance of houses that typically cycle through BC students. So year to year, they're just passed down to other BC students. But if you have four years of housing, um, I was fortunate I had four years of housing. So I still lived in a BC owned apartment building. Um, which is very nice. And then another unique thing is for senior year, um, the majority, I think it's over 90% of um, senior students do choose to move back on campus. So that's what I opted to do with my group of roommates. Um, so we also live on the lower campus in a dorm building, but it's an apartment style housing. So personally, I'm in a six man apartment. So I share a room with one other girl and there's three double rooms, two bathrooms, a full kitchen, um, a very nice common room. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the evolution of it, um, as best as I can describe it. Best as you can describe it. That was pretty comprehensive. Thanks, Colleen. Um, Kate, you've been on campus for all this time. Um, what's your, on a weekend, do you mostly stay on campus and do the things that are around you on campus? Do you use Boston much on the weekends? Sort of what's the relationship you have, you know, when you have some free time on the weekend, do you look on campus first then Boston? Do you plan nights in Boston way ahead of time? Do you do it in spur of the moment? Talk a little bit about how you use some of your weekend time and, and maybe how much Boston comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's definitely evolved in the, obviously in the age of COVID. Um, but I would say freshman, sophomore, and part of junior year when I came back from abroad, um, definitely hung out a lot on campus. Um, usually weekdays and on the weekends, there's some sort of BC sporting event to go to. And I'm a big BC sports fan. So I would always frequent those games. There's also, you know, various, you know, dance team shows, acapella shows, um, campus activity, activities board puts on a lot of activities to do on campus as well. Um, so there's an abundance of things to do on campus, uh, either on week nights or on the weekends as well. Um, so I'd say when I was younger, that's usually what I would gravitate towards. And maybe friends and I would go out to the North End in Boston on the weekend, grab dinner and go to Mike's Pace for do the whole, the whole shebang. Um, now that I'm older and now that you kind of have to be more intentional uh, with your planning since you were not allowed to have as many, you know, guests in your room and um, you just want to make sure you're following all the protocols and being safe. Uh, we definitely gravitate towards doing things in Boston, you know, renting out uh or reserving table space uh, now that i'm 21 we will go out and bars and restaurants and stuff like that in the city um so i think it definitely changes as you get older um and once now that we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of COVID restrictions and hopefully things will be much more normal once you join us in the fall of this coming year um i think on-campus activities will will resume in full full fling so i would say on campus for sure i'd love to have that happen more this year but it doesn't look like that's going to happen too much but next year for sure i think it'll be a lot better a lot of people asked about just what living in a residence hall has been like under these conditions and you alluded to it kate um maybe Talene, you could talk a little bit about uh, how it's been for you this year when you've been on campus what that's been like for you yeah, so um, like I said, I do live off campus, um, but I did receive four years of housing. I just opted to move off campus my senior Ooh, year. That's right. Um, so I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this question, but I would say that in regards to like academics in the classroom, um, BZ has done a phenomenal job. Um, I have felt so comfortable. Um, I'm personally immunocompromised, so I have to be really careful. Um, and every time I come to campus, I feel great. Like I never have to worry about, um, I don't know, like other people or just anything else because we get tested every week and um, everything is wiped down. We have signs that say wipe down these desks before you sit in them. Um, but in regards to my friends that live in the dorms, I personally sadly can't go um, 
on campus in their dorms. So my friends and I will go out to dinner, we'll um, make something work um, so we can all hang out with each other. But um, I'm definitely gonna pass that question to someone else that lives on campus this year. No, but but you got us started, Talene. Charlie, how about you and, and what you've seen um, being on campus this year? Yeah, so I think that with the warmer weather, um, people definitely spend a lot more time outside. Um, which I think has been one of my favorite things seeing living on the Newton campus. There's a lot of green space up there, but then also, of course, on the quads on middle campus, which are featured in a lot of our admissions content on Instagram. Um, people love to be outside, you know, it gets to be like 55 degrees out and you see people out there in shorts and a t-shirt, which for me is still a little bit too cold for shorts and a t-shirt, but you know, pulling out the sweatshirt, uh, still rocking the shorts, but um, yeah, so I think outside has become a much bigger option, especially in the last uh, couple of weeks as COVID restrictions have eased. Uh, as Talene kind of said, CAB and UGBC, two of the major programming organizations on campus have done a lot with outdoor events. Um, and then like, I know right now they put lawn chairs out uh, outside of the residence halls. This afternoon, for some reason, they were wrapping some of the trees outside of my building with like Christmas lights, um, which I'm like, it's too early for Christmas in July, but must just be for some nice lighting and opportunities to hang outside with the warmer weather. But yeah, I would say definitely there's an encouragement to do stuff outside um, in those nice, friendly uh, COVID safe groups. Um, and then again, on campus, uh, in the residence halls, there are the guest limits. So that is just like one little impact. So there's just not typically as much of uh, people hanging out in dorm rooms for long extended periods of time. Right. <clears throat> um, we covered a lot of ground, I think. Um, some people asked about the study abroad piece and while it is, you know, looking far ahead for our viewers, uh, a couple of you studied abroad. Can you talk a little bit about, did it have any impact in terms of your housing choices? Um, was that something that people should consider if they're planning on studying abroad in their junior year, how it's going to affect where they can live or how they can live? Any of you guys that did a semester abroad could, could help us out with that. I'm happy to touch on that. Um, so I, as I mentioned, I did have four years of housing, which made it very easy to study abroad um, because I basically just told um, the Office of Residential Life, I will be here in the fall semester, so I just need housing. Um, in the 2000 Commonwealth apartments for this semester. And then myself, so that year I lived in an apartment with three other roommates, so four of us total. Myself and one other girl, um, we did end up going abroad in the spring and then two girls who had been abroad in the fall just moved in. So that process was very easy, very low stress. Um, and in terms of my friends who had the three years of housing and they lived off campus, um, that's honestly kind of why junior year is the year that people live off campus because in a typical year, about 50% of students choose to study abroad at some point. So it's very easy to, um, to sign a lease on a house and then sublet from somebody in your opposite semester. So a lot of my um, friends who lived in an off-campus house opted for that. Uh, does anybody else want to add to that? Okay, okay, good stuff. Well, our hour's almost over. Maybe you guys didn't think we'd be able to answer uh, all kinds of questions about housing in, in 55 minutes. We didn't even get close to answering all the questions. Uh, there are still many questions that are in the Q&A. And for all of our, our viewers tonight, uh, our, our panelists put their email addresses in their, in their camera box. Uh, I urge you to follow up. You're not, you're not bothering them. Um, they're, they volunteer for this uh, and I make them feel guilty to answer any questions that come your way in terms of anything. Because uh, people asked about club sports and people asked about traditions and people asked about going into the city and people asked more specifically about things that you guys like to do. Um, these guys are great. I've worked with them for a long time and they're very willing to answer your questions. Um, all you guys are admitted and you have a big decision to make in 24 days, not that anybody's counting days, but it's a big decision. And I, like I said at the beginning, you're coming to us and you're going to rely on us for everything. Most importantly, the people that are make up this community and, you know, we don't want to hide anything. We want to tell you what our hospitality and our resources and how to access them and what we're all about. And if these guys can help, help you a little bit with getting that information, they're very happy to do it. I'd answer questions all night, but 
uh, we don't have, we have to cut this off at an hour. So for all of you that viewed, uh, thank you. Um, this will be uh, put on the admitted student portal like some of the other videos are. Um, for all my panelists, you guys are great. And uh, especially for the seniors that have worked with us for all these times, thank you so much. It's always been fun to work with you and I'll see you on campus hopefully really soon. Um, please keep the conversation going with any of our, our panelists that they can give you that bit of information that can make you feel more comfortable about going to college and what Boston College is all about. Thanks again for watching. Uh, good luck with your decision. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I have another program. Tomorrow we're focusing on the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. And then later in this month, we'll be talking about BC traditions. We'll be talking about uh, campus life. We'll be talking about spirituality and retreats. So uh, keep an eye on your admitted student portal to see some of the other student admission programs that are coming up this month. Thanks for watching. Uh, good night. Thanks, guys.